Tiffany Patton and I am here with my very special guest. He is no stranger to the television. However, his book has got people talking worldwide. His latest book, Sex in the Pews. That's right, I said it. Sex in the Pews. That's right. I have him here live and in the flesh. It is no other than Pastor Jonathan K. Sanders. Now, a lot of people were wondering, what do you mean sex and abuse? Yeah, he said it, and he did it, and he wrote it all here. And we'll find out what he means by sex and abuse, an expose on the hidden sex culture in the church. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. I'm so excited, so happy, and ecstatic to mm -hmm. finally be on your show. It's so talked about, and I'm mm -hmm. just glad to be counted in the number. Well, One thank more time. you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Now... I, I was really intrigued. The reason why I really wanted to have you on the show is because Sex and the Pews, just the title itself, I think did exactly what you wanted it to do. It gained a lot of people's attention. Um, but it's almost like I've, I've heard a lot of backlash. Like, how dare he? Like, is he serious? Tell us a little bit about Sex and the Pews because just the um, titles alone for each chapter is quite intriguing. Um, one that I'm going to talk about in just a few moments. but. What was the motivation behind Sex and Abuse? One of the biggest motivators about writing the book is basically it's a hidden sex culture in the church. Something mm -hmm. that most Christians, church folks, laity, they know about, mm -hmm. but nobody's talking about it. And when they do, they talk about it in private circles. Mm -hmm. It's going on in the church where you have swingers in church now, you have gay churches now, you have certain guys that come to church just to get a good woman, you got women that go to church just to get men, mm -hmm. you got the preachers that use their position of power and influence to get women. Mm -hmm. You get women that come to church that seeking the power or you know the, the fame that they think that comes with ministry. Mm -hmm. So it's a subject that's hot. It's a subject that's being talked about. Mm -hmm. And I just ask and thank God for being one of the voices that he's using in this culture to shine a light, kick open the door, bust it out, and let people know this is going down. This is a fulfillment of scripture, St. John 8.32, and ye shall know the truth, mm -hmm. and the truth shall make you free. Shall set you free. Okay, so help me with this. STD. Now, most of you guys know STD is sexually transmitted diseases. However, that means in this book, sexually transmitted demons. Absolutely. Okay, so tell us a little bit about that. When you look at STD, sexually transmitted demons, people unfortunately think that when you have illegal sex with somebody that's not your husband, not your wife, mm -hmm. they think the only thing that's being uh, exchanged is saliva and, and whatever, all the kind of juices or whatever, but that's not just a fact. When you sleep with a person sexually, whatever spirit they have on them, mm -hmm. they'll put it on you. How is it sometimes a man can have, be having sex with a woman, two people can be intertwined together, and how this man can be no good Good for this woman. She know he got chicks on the side. Part of them gave her a real STD, Ugh. and she don't leave him. Right. What kind of stronghold does she have? Yeah. Does he have over her? Mm -hmm. How is it some pastors got more control over a married woman in their church, mm -hmm. and their husband don't? Mm. That's something we don't want to talk about. Yeah, but you it said happens it. all the time. You said it. You said I'm. I'm not mad at all. Okay, so you have. I'm holy, but still horny. <laughs> you had to bring that up. Huh? Yes, I'm sorry. Right. I, I well, had to. You know, holiness, no different. You get sleepy. Mm -hmm. You get thirsty. You get hungry. Your, your human anatomy have sex organs and you get horny. Mm -hmm. It's what you do with the horniness. But unfortunately, a lot of preachers have to tell a person, well, if you get horny, you in sin. You right. got the devil in you. Right. That's not true. That's unbiblical on top of that. All if right. you're married, I hope you get horny. Hello. Right. You know, come on now. <laughs> It's crazy. Right, that's you see, true. So we, we need to just tell the people the whole truth. Yeah, you single, you young. I mean, I got a church full of young people. Mm -hmm. They don't have to tell me on the weekends they're getting hot and getting horny. It's my <laughs> job to preach to them and yeah. give them something else to do besides right. fulfill that horniness. And as Paul say, bringing your body under subjection. Okay, so how do you feel? How do you address that? Because so many times the church does not want to talk about this subject, the very taboo subject of mm -hmm. sex, when this subject alone is probably one of the biggest roots to a lot of the different issues that are going on in the church. What do you say to those who 
don't even go to church because of that reason. All the churches fake they're phony. The pastors, they don't preach to the things that is going on. They act like they don't go through things. I don't want to go back or I was at a church and he was preaching one thing on Sunday, but by we to, by the time we got to the parking lot most times or on Monday morning, I see him doing something totally different. What do you say to those people that feel like church is just not the place to be because of those things? Because a lot of those reasons come from things that stem from the church. It's a powerful question, Tiffany, and I'm glad you asked that. And what is so important in what you just said is they are turned off by the conduct of an individual. Mm -hmm. Now, no bishop, no pastor, no evangelist, no prophetess, they are not God, is of God. Mm -hmm. And all through the scripture from Moses to Paul to David, all of God's mouthpiece at times messed up. Yes. I told somebody, frankly, that I had a short conversation with at the gas station. These all men, these preachers is fake. All they want is money, the women. Yes. These women in the church lying, they are sleeping around, da da da. I said, well, first of all, you can't say the church. Now, you may be speaking of a, a church, church. Mm -hmm. but you can't be talking of every church because there are some churches where you have some holy people. Yeah. You have some men and women that are devoted to each other in holy matrimony. Mm -hmm. I said, so until you see Jesus sneaking out the hotel trying to get in the motel, then you got a reason. <laughs> <laughs> until you see uh, uh, Jesus, you know, turning up some Mad Dog 2020, mm -hmm. then you got a reason. Mm -hmm. Don't let the actions of an individual turn you completely away from the church. You know, somebody said, well, they ain't got nothing but liars and cheaters and them saints up there in the church, mm -hmm. they on drugs too. I ain't going in there. I told one brother, I said, okay, you're going to be at Walmart before the week is out. Mm -hmm. In Walmart, they got liars. They got hoes, excuse me. They mm -hmm. got dope dealers. Mm -hmm. They got all the people in Walmart. Right. But watch this. None of those reasons going to make you leave Walmart. You're going to fill your car up and get what you get. Buy what you buy and leave. You know why? You didn't go to Walmart for the people that's in there. You went for the product. Mm. Church, that's good. the product of the church is Jesus. Right. If we giving people the product which is Jesus, none of them other things matter. On your job, there are liars and dogs and hypocrites and fake people. In your family, mm -hmm. you got crackheads and dope dealers, but you never saying, change my last name. <laughs> <laughs> you in the few of in there. And it right. is, is what it is. Right. So you got some good churches. And my thing is, you find one that's suitable to you yes. and keep on serving God. All right. Okay. So this is the No Holds Barred Pastor Jonathan K. Sanders. He is the author of Sex and the Pews. You are watching On the Go with Tiffany Patton. We're going to go on a quick break. And then we'll be back because he has another chapter in this book that I wanted to talk about. You are watching On the Go. We'll be right back. This is a moment with J.K. Sanders. I want you to check out my latest book, LAPD, Life After a Painful Divorce. Somebody's listening to me right now, and right now your heart is raw. It's been crushed in a thousand pieces. You think life is over because he left because she said I'm fed up. But I want you to know life is not over. Matter of fact, it just might be beginning. Who knows? Maybe it can be better the second time around. It is not God's will for your life to end because the relationship ended. Matter of fact, this is the time for you to flourish. This is not the time, my brother, my sister for you to say I'm upset with the opposite gender. I don't want to have nothing to do with a man. I'm fed up with all you women. This is not the time to lose the real. This is not the time for you to drop your weight and don't get your hair done. Don't get a haircut. Upset with the world. I want you to know that you can bounce back at the attack because there is life after a painful divorce. Hello, you are on the go with Tiffany Patton, and if you've just joined us, you've joined me along with a pastor, Jonathan K. Sanders, soon to be bishop, and uh, he is the author of Sex in the Pews, an expose on the hidden sex culture in the church. Now, one of the biggest um, things out alive right now and prevalent in the community is um, homosexual relationships. They are changing laws, allowing... Um, you know, men to marry men, women to wear, to marry women. However, I know what my Bible says. That's right. How do you feel about that? Now, me personally, I love all people. And the, the, the one thing that you must have beyond anything is love. But I think we may have strayed and, and gotten way far off from what the Word of God says. But that's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. You have a, a chapter in this book called The Gay Agenda in the Church. Tell us a little bit about that and your take well, on it. Well, The Gay Agenda in the Church is one of the fastest, unfortunately strongest, 
financially potential moving mm -hmm. agendas in the church today. You have churches now where some of it is undercover, mm -hmm. some of it is wide open. You have churches that have a blatant uh, gay person that's over the music department, mm -hmm. especially the music department. Yes. Remember that. Yes. Uh, and these individuals, they believe that God loves them the way they are and they are right. Mm -hmm. He loves you the way you are as a human being yes. chosen. Mm -hmm. So as you first stated, we show love to them because there are some demented gays that believe that God made them that way. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some that say, well, you can say what you want, preacher. God made me a homosexual. God made me. I was born like this. I said, well, that's why the Bible says you must be born again. Yes. If this is happening, and one of the most critical things is, because I look at both of the gay agendas differently. They're hiding, they're not afraid. They're wide open with it. This is me. I'm gay. I'm married to a first gentlemen some women passes married to another woman mm -hmm. and um, but you have the other gay agenda you got to watch out and this is those pastors that know that homosexuality is going on in their churches sometimes they themselves are that way mm -hmm. and they will f refuse to preach on it at all they are preaching say God will give you a Mercedes mm -hmm. you're gonna get a big old house they're gonna keep it prosperity mm -hmm. they're not gonna preach on holiness and matter of fact as an evangelist that have preached from South America to Jamaica from New York to LA mm -hmm. I've even been in the back before I go out to preach in the past like well listen doc I just want you to know I have a strong homosexual following I don't wow. want you to say nothing about no gays and wow. just talk about Daniel and the lion's den preach on with a woman with issue of love make them make them shout raise money and let's go home are you serious and those churches wow. are a death trap yes Yes. They don't have no standard of holiness and one of the worst things that can happen is you go to a church on Sunday mornings that posts to offer you hope, but instead they offer you a first class ticket to hell. Hmm. You are in a death trap and people know that that's happening. Wow. Wow. I, I can't. I, I think I'm a little bit blown back about the part that you're actually giving the disclaimer. Absolutely. First, um, and that have you ever noticed what? Notice also. Have you ever noticed that some pastors only call certain preachers to preach? I've noticed that, but I, I thought uh, that maybe there's this affiliation why, oh, with churches. No. Okay. No, and they, they don't want and they, they don't want people to live it. And that's like it's almost like the doctor that refused hmm. to perform an operation that's gonna save a person. Yes. You wanna just keep getting paid. You ain't into saving, you just into having your license and getting paid. And unfortunately passes a day look at their ministry as no different than a corporation and they are a CEO. Hmm. And they don't realize as men and women of God, we are messengers that's supposed to help souls get delivered from losing their souls in hell. Right. But instead there's a lot of pastors that they, they play with the souls. They tell the people whatever they want to hear. As long as they're driving their new car, as long as they're living in a big house, as long as they got a fat salary, they could care less about the soul of the person. Wow. And when you're in a church like that, you're on dangerous territory. Dangerous. Time to get out. Time to go. Hurt in the house is really what you're talking about. And there's so many people who are, are coming to church every Sunday. And they go there and they're hurt. And they're hurt because many different reasons one or possibly because I know the congregation is so large pastor doesn't know me anyway so I, I mean I'm going but I'm going because this is what I feel that I need to do to get better but they're leaving the same way but then so many times they're going to church and a lot of times if they let the pastors know what their issues are I've heard people say well yeah you know he was talking about me across the pew <laughs> There's a lot of that going on. Mm -hmm. How do you address that? Well, you know, that's just a very unusual statement because sometimes, you know, a lot of churches, especially bigger churches, even my church, you mm -hmm. know, I don't do all the actual counseling. Exactly. I have, you know, certain individuals that do the counseling because at times I don't want to be caught into that where God will give me something and I'm preaching and teaching on it and the person they're going to put their business out. Mm -hmm. You see, a real church will automatically feed to what you need. Yes. That's what a real church do. If I, I, you know, I have a type of ministry where I believe in the mentality of a person must change first. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So I work on the mindset of a person. Why you think like that? Why are you acting like that? Why you think you need this person? Mm -hmm. And when you get down to the root of something like that, you can change the future of a person by first looking into their past. Mm -hmm. So you have to find a church that helps you. There's a lot of ministries that I'm not going to call, but there's a lot of ministries they they, 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 they focus on uh, the prosperity of the gospel. Mm -hmm. And that's all they focus on. Now yeah. there's some people, that's what they want, and that's what they flock to. And then there's others that have ministries that are tailor-made to help battered women mm -hmm. that come out of rough relationships and incest and molestations and rapes. And then there are other churches that really help young people find their path in life. 
So the universality of churches are so wide open today as a person that's a non-believer that's looking for a church, that's something that you got to really take your time to because it's like a restaurant. Mm -hmm. you know, what you want to eat today? Soul food. What you want? Chinese. Mm -hmm. What you want? Uh, you, you know, some Spanish food. So, you right. know, every church serves their own dish and it's best that you find one that's complimentary to you. So what would you say to someone who has backslid and they, you know, I'm done, I'm done with church. Earlier you stated that it's not about the people in the church, but the reason why you're going to church. What would you say right now if you had to speak to someone who's just probably sitting there watching like, okay, this sounds good, but I just, I don't want to be a part of the foolery. I don't want to be a part of them saying one thing on Sunday and living another thing on Monday. I'm trying to get past it or the church is who hurt me. The reason why I am a homosexual now is because I was first touched in the church. Mm -hmm. What do you say to those individuals? I would say to an individual of the evangelist, Jesus is that example. No matter who hurt you, you can have to first learn to get into tapping the God to the point that you first of all forgive. Mm -hmm. You forgive somebody that offended you and then you make up in your mind, I have a soul. God told me in the yard, you know, I ain't worried about that stuff you preach to the preacher, I'm going to live forever. I said, brother, I agree with you, but the question is where? Hmm. Where are you going to live forever at? Is that going to be in heaven or is it going to be in hell? Because you will die. We all are appointed to die. But the question is, when you die and you have to stand before God, what is going to be your excuse? I would have came to church, but that one preacher over there on 5th and 11th, he got all the chicks. I ain't trying to go there. What's going to be your excuse? I didn't come to church because, man, my cousin go to church. He a deacon. He sell crack on the side. When God, notice, when you stand before God, he ain't going to ask you about nobody but you. He ain't going to ask you about your cousin, your brother, your sister. He going to say, you knew I sent my son to die. You knew his blood was shed. You had an addiction in lives, but you refused to accept me. Now what you want me to do? And that's the choice you have to make. If you've been in church and have been hurt in church, make it up in your mind. I'm going to ask God to forgive me and forgive those who offended me. And I'm going to find me a Bible-believing church and I'm going to get my life together. You may be watching the show now. That's the reason why you're smoking weed, you're doing crack, sleeping around, drinking yourself drunk and into oblivion every night because you're masking something that drug stores don't have. You're masking something they don't sell at the drive through Nino Brown, the dope dealer, don't have your solution. You're going to find out after you finish smoking the weed, doing the cocaine, doing the crack, going through the women, doing that, you're going to find out that's a temporary fix. If you want to take 10 or 20 years to realize that's what it is, go ahead. But every year you waste is a, weird, a year you waste in your life. How you know, brother? I have. I know what it is to hit crack by the pipe. I know what it is to do lines of cocaine. I know what it is to try to find hope at the bottom of a fifth of Mad Dog or 40 ounce slips more liquor. But none of those is your answer. Christ is the only answer. And I pray you find out sooner than later. There is a church out there with your name on it that's going to that's gonna point you in the right direction and your life going to be moved off a pause to go and you will live the life that Christ has for you. I believe you believe that down in your heart. I really do. There you have it. I don't think I have to say anything else because he said everything that has needed to be said. Um, I thank you. I could really go through more. But if I did that, then you guys would not go and get the book. And we want you to purchase the book. Where can they purchase the book? They can purchase the book at www.jksandersministries.org. You can go to Amazon. You can go to Barnes & Noble. You can download it on Kindle. It's out there for you. It will bless your socks off. I guarantee it. <laughs> now, if you are saying, okay, this is a good book, but I need something that would touch relationally to me. Um, Pastor J.K. Sanders also has another book, which is LAPD Life After a Painful Divorce. Now, it's not just about divorce, it's about relationships. It teaches you that. Uh, and it also can divorce, I mean, even not just a divorce. I love TKO. I know you don't know what that means, but some do. <laughs> uh, your relationship where Tyrone left you and you feel like the world is over, or Sabrina walked out and you think life is over. I just believe that it is not the will of God if a husband or if a boo or whoever walk out of your life. It is not God's will for you to be somewhere in a dark, cold basement singing an old Michael Jackson classic, talking about I sit around with my head hanging down, wondering who's loving you. The <laughs> devil is a liar. I'm wondering who's next. Because love can be better the second time around. And there are too many people. I mean, listen, I know people that have left God 
because the marriage went sour. I know people that, believe it or not, I've known women that embrace the lesbian lifestyle. A man will never hurt me like that again. This, mm -hmm. this Negro gave me all these kids, won't pay child support, and ran off with my cousin. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you'd be surprised at what a rough relationship would do to somebody. Some people got on drugs. Others became alcoholics. Mm -hmm. and, and we have given people too much power over our life. Yes. You can make it in life without anybody but Jesus. All right, like I said, you want to definitely follow. How can we follow you? Make books. You can get his books on site. Give us your website. Again, www.jksandersministries.org. You can get the book on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, as well as Kindle. You can find us on Instagram, uh, Twitter at jksanders7, and Facebook under Jonathan K. Sanders. Remember, don't connect if you don't want the real wheel. I, and I was just going to say, if you follow this man on, um, on Facebook, Please be a mature-minded individual because if you're not, you will not be able to stomach some of the you know, Chase involved because he is the real deal. God has definitely anointed him to do what he does. I thank you so much. I thank, I thank you, you so much. Thank you for having me on your show. Yes. I'm going to buy you some chicken wings. All right. See, and now I get to eat. So make sure that you stay tuned. We have much more for you here on On The Go with Tiffany Patton. We've been sitting and chatting with no other than pastor, soon to be bishop, Jonathan K. Sanders. We'll be right back. This is a moment with J.K. Sanders, author of Sex in the Pews, a book written on the hidden sex culture in the church. This book covers things that people want to sweep under the rug, lock in the back room, things that they don't want you to know about. If you really want the truth, check out this book. We talk about the gay agenda that's fastly moving in the church. We talk about a topic, baby oil or holy oil. People that come to church with the wrong agenda. We talk about being hurt in the house, being offended. Have you ever walked into a church and something in the atmosphere just wasn't right? All kind of spirits and demons and folk that's supposed to be doing praise and worship up there jiggling and jaggling. I mean, there's just all kind of stuff going on in the church, but they, this book will teach you and prevent you from falling into the sex traps that the devil went through to overtake your life. Check this book out. It will rock your world and bless your soul. Sex in the pews. Hello, you are on the go with Tiffany Patton, and we are here with the very legendary saxophonist and flautist himself, <laughs> Najee. Hello, Najee. How are you? I'm fine. I, you know, I still get trip on this term, legendary. I don't know when that when that started. You know. <laughs> well, see, you shouldn't be so good at what you do. That's that's oh, what, what no, happens. No, no, hey, listen, that's what happens. I'm gonna check my bank account after this <laughs> <laughs> after this interview here. <laughs> well, okay, so. With being legendary, you get a lot of statements, and one um, that I found was a major artistic statement from one of the greatest instrumentalists of our time. Wow. When people say things like that to you, how does that make you feel? I, you know, I, I don't take this too serious, you know, I mean, and I think uh, if that's how people feel, I'll take it, obviously, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm not, uh, that's not what I thrive on, that's not what motivates me. What motivates me is the fact that uh, that I enjoy creating new music. I enjoy working with people that inspire me to do, you know, what I do, and and uh, and I'm inspired by people who support it. So, yeah. Well, you have a new album. Yes. Mm -hmm. You meet and forever. Yes. Tell us about that album and what inspired it. Well, you know, I wanted to uh, work with musicians that I've known for many years in different parts of the country and uh, overseas, particularly in the UK. Uh, so I, I uh, went over to the UK and began recording over in Incognito Studio. I actually started with a project with Incognito, okay. but it shifted into it was time for me to do my own album. And uh, the record company was like, we need to get it done. And since I was over there, I started collecting UK musicians and we came up with a few songs. And, and that brought me to New York to the Google Doll Studio. And then it took okay. me to Dallas, it took me to LA. And this is what we ended up with. Hopefully you like it. So, well, I'm uh, sure that they will because they've loved everything thus far. Um, one question, when it comes to compiling your music, yes. is that a process for you? Uh, I don't see it that way. Okay. Really, uh, it really starts out just fun. Mm -hmm. and it is a process because you know you go through the different processes of composition and what feels good, what doesn't feel good. You can record, spend some money on some things, but honestly, you know, it's just, I guess because I don't take it, I don't look at it as work. Okay. I look at it as just what I love to do, and it's just fun to me. So. Well, it is definitely something that we all love to hear from oh, you. Okay. And um, if you had 
one thing that you could tell someone who was aspiring to even do music. Yes. With the day and age being what it is, what would that be? Because there's it, there's a, a thing where we've taken away from the music industry and yes. it's been more auto-tunes or yes. um, just not things of music substance. Well, that's a, you know, that's a, that's a great question. I, I think uh, in a, one of the interviews I did earlier, I said, uh, you know, technology should enhance who you are. Mm. You know, you shouldn't be dependent on it. Yes. You know, when you listen back to some of the older artists, they didn't have all those things that we had. What people bought and what they supported was true artistry. Yes. So, but there is a good marriage between technology and art that can be brought, and that's pretty much that. The other thing I would say is to, to really just uh, find the voice that lies inside of you, you know, really. And just develop that and try to uh, imitate uh, what other people have done because, you know, people have heard Stevie, they've heard mm -hmm. Shocker, they've heard, you know, but they haven't heard who you are. Mm -hmm. And that's what people will buy originality. Okay, so lastly, if there was one person out of all of the many people that you've already been with, that you've already played with, who would that one person be, either new or old? Mm -hmm. that you can work with, that you've yet to work with, who would you that know what? person You uh, know what, I would say my, uh, I'd say my, I, we call her boss lady to this day, Shaka Khan. Mm -hmm. And that's because my career, uh, she gave, well even Melissa Morgan, okay. who was, uh, we started in her band together. Mm -hmm. And she gave us an, un, uh, an opportunity that we couldn't have ever anticipated being kids. Right. Just uh, still green on the scene, you know. Mm -hmm. And she gave us an opportunity that's led us to what we do today. So I would love to do a record with her. Wow, Shaka Khan, he's put it out there. Boss lady, now, you hear this? The boss lady, it's, boss lady, it's up to you now. It's up to you. <laughs> okay, first song you ever remembered? First and I'll, 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 I'll let you go with that. What is the first song that you ever remember hearing that caused you to want to play the saxophone? I would have to say it was Desinfinado. Now, you wouldn't know that song. Okay. Uh, in, in elementary school, <laughs> came in and played this song that I had heard my mother play at home. Hmm. It was a popular song by, uh, I can't remember if it was, uh, it wasn't Stanley Turrentine, it was, oh, Stan Getz, okay. Stan Getz. And um, I heard this teacher come in school one day and he played the song and I thought he was the guy that recorded the song. Well, you know? I was very impressed by it. So. Well, he has definitely paved the way for an amazing artist and I thank you so much for taking the time out. Definitely, right. definitely, don't feel like you've missed something because we'll have much more footage and we'll have a little bit, just a piece of what you did miss if since you were not here at the beautiful Shane Park celebrating 30 years here in the beautiful downtown Detroit. It is an evening with Najee. Oh,